Hi. In this video, I'm going to continue the practical decision making in laser and refractive surgery. I'm going to talk about the practical subjective scoring system, PS3, which is my latest classification of the risk factors based on corneal tomography. This system consists of 10 points. Central anterior keratometry, thinnest corneal thickness, astigmatism, anterior sagittal map, anterior elevation map, posterior elevation map, pachymetry map, corneal thickness spatial profile, relative thickness map, and inter-eye asymmetry. Starting with the KM anterior or central K, which is the mean K on the anterior curvature map or the anterior corneal surface. The cutoff point is 48 diopters in the Scheinflug based topographers. But in the placido based topographers, the cutoff point is 47.2 diopters. Now, this value is considered as abnormal when it is between 48 and 50, and it is considered as high risk when it is above 50. The thinnest corneal thickness, the cutoff point is 500 microns. Whenever it is between 500 and 470 microns, it is considered as moderate risk. And whenever it is less than 470, then it is high risk because less than 2.5% of normal population has such thickness. The third point is astigmatism. We have to study the topographical astigmatism based on the total corneal refractive power. I study the astigmatism by the total corneal refractive power in the 5 mm zone centered with the pupil center. But not every time we can have an access to this map so very roughly we can calculate the amount of corneal astigmatism by deducting the amount of astigmatism of the posterior surface from the amount of astigmatism of the anterior surface as in this example. But we have to pay attention to the color of the displaced uh, axis on the anterior corneal surface. Uh, so in this example it is in red which means the steep axis. However we have to calculate the flat axis or uh, to adjust the settings in the camera. The flat axis in this case is 170 as you see and uh, this is important because usually in the minus cylinder equation the uh, cylinder is oriented on the flat axis. After that we have to compare the topographical astigmatism with the subjective astigmatism. Whenever there is a difference in the magnitude more than one diopter or in the axis more than 10 degrees then it is considered as moderate risk factor. The anterior sagittal map. We have to study the patterns and some numbers. Regarding the patterns, this is the usual pattern that we encounter in daily practice indicating with the rule astigmatism. As you see this is almost symmetric bow tie. However, the patterns can be classified into four categories. Group A contains the symmetric patterns, group B contains the asymmetric patterns, group C contains the skewed patterns, and group D contains the special patterns. Starting with the symmetric patterns, round, oval, and symmetric bow tie. However, not every symmetric pattern is normal. Now we have to look at the KM. Whenever the KM is normal, those patterns are normal. Otherwise, they are either moderate risk factor or high risk factor. In group B, although they are asymmetric, but not every asymmetric pattern is abnormal. So we have to study the two opposing point in the second circle of numbers on the steep axis, as in this example. And we have to see the difference in the magnitude between these two points. In the superior steep patterns, if the difference is 2.5 or more, it is considered as moderate risk factor. And in the inferior uh, steep patterns, the cutoff point is 1.5 diopters. Group C is the skewed pattern, and it consists of two patterns, the symmetric bow tie and asymmetric bow tie with skewed radial axis index. Now, as you see, if there is an angle 
between the inferior and superior segments axis if the angle is more than 21 degree or in other words 22 and above it is considered as high risk factor however we can apply this only when there is one diopter or more of corneal astigmatism so if there is less than this we can ignore this index as in this example the amount of astigmatism is almost 0.4 so in this case even if we have skewed radial axis it is insignificant the last group is group d which consists of the special shapes just like butterfly crab claw vertical d irregular pattern or clone face they are all abnormal and they are all considered as high risk the elevation maps we are going to study the anterior and posterior elevation maps together we have to look at the value corresponding to the thinnest location as you see here and then we have to follow this table showing the cutoff points for myopic and hyperopic people for the anterior and posterior elevation maps for example if a myopic patient has a value on the anterior surface more than eight it is considered as high risk factor the pachymetry map we have to look at the pattern this is the normal pattern in normal population which is the disc form or the concentric form sometimes we may encounter the horizontal displacement of the the pattern uh, because of the horizontal displacement of the thinnest location now this can be encountered in cases of misalignment during taking the capture or large angle kappa so this is a clue of such two situations and this is the dome shape which is a vertical displacement of the thinnest location and in 90 percent of cases this pattern is characteristic for ectatic corneal diseases this is the bell shape indicating an inferior band thinning in the cornea this is a hallmark of pellucid marginal degeneration this is the keratoglobus pattern which is a generalized thinning extending to the limbus corneal thickness profile this profile describes the progression of thickness starting from the thinnest location towards corneal periphery now we have to study the patterns of the red curves and to study the number uh, as you see in the red ellipse it is the average number now we have to study the shape or the pattern of the red curves in relation to the six millimeter zone now if this red curve leaves its passage before the six millimeter zone we call this quick slope which is a high risk factor sometimes it may take an s shape where it leaves its passage before the six millimeter then it goes up again and sometimes it may take the s shape but after the six millimeter now the s shape before the six millimeter is considered as high risk while the s shape after the six millimeter is considered as moderate risk this is the flat shape and it is characteristic of diseased thickened cornea as in fox and cornea guttata so this is a hallmark and we have to look for cornea guttata and fox dystrophy this is the inverted pattern which is a hallmark of pellucid marginal degeneration however not every pellucid marginal degeneration has this pattern we have to study the number in the average the cutoff point is 1.2 if the number is 1.2 or above it is considered as moderate risk factor this is the relative thickness map which correlates the measured cornea with the average in normal population now as you see it may display the numbers in minus or in plus the minus numbers means that these areas with minus are thinner than the average normal while the plus are thin, thicker than the average normal. Now the cutoff point is 8%. So if the number is less than 8%, for example, minus 12%, it is considered as moderate risk factor. And this is true in any point. So any point in this map. 
I'll show you some patterns. This is a pattern of keratoconus. As you see, it is irregular with very thin cone shape. This is another case of keratoconus, as you see. Now, this is the disciform pattern, which is a hallmark or characteristic of post myopic laser vision correction. This is the annular pattern, which is characteristic of post hyperopic laser vision correction. And this is the elongated shape, which is characteristic of post-astigmatic correction. The last point is inter-eye asymmetry. We have to compare both eyes based on five parameters, as you see in this table. Finally, this is a summary table of the practical subjective scoring system. You can stop at it and read it deeply before you move to the second step. Now, how I apply this practical subjective scoring system in my daily practice? If I find no risk factors, then I can go for surface ablation, smile technique, or even LASIK. If there is one moderate risk factor, I cannot go for LASIK. I can go for surface ablation or smile. And if I have two moderate risk factors or one high risk factor, then I cannot go for laser vision correction. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the factors of false positives and false negatives. Thank you very much.